So today I'm up here uh, working on trying to finish up the rough electrical for the outside of the house. Got a few exterior outlet boxes I need to put in and uh, some boxes for exterior lights, bracket lights that go on, you know, beside the doors. So trying to finish that up. I've been just letting this uh, concrete cure for the last couple weeks, week and a half. So far so good. Uh, it's a big slab, so it's going to take a while for it to, you know, set up to where you can actually put decent weight on it or anything like that. So I'm kind of waiting on that before I have some drywall delivered because that's going to be heavy. Uh, and then hopefully within the next two or three weeks, we're going to start building the porch roofs. But in the meantime, I'm just going to try and button up as much as I can with all these little odds and ends getting ready to do the exterior and to do the drywall inside. So that's what I'm doing today. Got my wire here from the uh, PVC sleeve pipe that we put into the ICF before we poured. And then we just caulked that and foamed it to fill that hole. Uh, so now the challenge is you got to dig out the block of foam and then cut the PVC so you can get the wire into the box. So it's not quite as quick and easy as like stud framing so basically I just took the box traced it out and then you cut it with a drywall saw right to the concrete and then I just cut a little slice in the middle take my little cat paw pop it out Now I gotta cut this pipe without cutting the wire. Right, get your wire in the box. Drill, drill this bad boy. Tack on. So here's the porch slab we poured in the last video. It's drying out, curing fairly nicely. You can see a few little dark spots where it's still, I think, a bit, a little bit wet. But it's going to take a while for it to cure fully because it's a pretty thick slab. But you can tell that it's drying out and you know turning white, getting really light in color. And so I had a few people ask if we we're going to stain it and seal it. I think yes we are going to stain it and seal it we're going to let it sit we're going to be doing these porch roofs all along there and do like a two two foot overhang off the end so that's a 10 foot six inch deep porch uh this way so we'll probably do a 12 foot uh ceiling and I think we've got enough room from there to there to do a four foot high at the top. So that'd be a 412 pitch. That's ma that makes it easy. If you make it 12 feet this way and then you go up four feet that way, you got a 412 pitch. And then we'll have at least a foot and a half overhang off the end of the uh, slab there. So here's the uh, other outlet on the outside. Go around to the cold side. There's one there. It's really pretty today. And here's the one we just did. Now I gotta do a bracket light there where that wire comes out. And then all that other wire is for floodlights that go on the corners of the porch roof. You know, it'll be like there and there on both sides of the house. 
then we got to do a bracket light actually four one there one there one there one there so I gotta put round boxes where I marked those and then I'm back around to the front got to do one beside this door and then we've got uh, extra wire also for ceiling fans in the porch in the porch ceiling as well as floodlights so there's a lot of wire but I'm not gonna mess with those until we get the porch roofs done so we know exactly where we can run that wire uh, I think I'll just do the deck side get those knocked out and then start working on some stuff inside okay I got them done and I'm so mad at myself I was on the last one, which was right here. I was trying to be careful with that oscillating, you know, little saw to cut that sleeve right there. And I nicked the cable and I had to pull it all out because this cable go or that wire goes over there and then down to a switch inside. I had to pull that whole wire out, which was already spray foamed and sealed into the wall. And I had to rerun a new wire just to do that last box it's always the last one that gets you but it's fixed so i've about got as much of the outside electrical fixture boxes put in as i can right now at least until we get the porch roofs on so uh and the porch roofs i think we're gonna shoot for the end of march um i got a hold of bob the framer and uh he's supposed to be coming up here take a look at it see what we got to get done and I also had a drywall guy come out and take a look, get a sheet count, and he's going to give me a quote on hanging, taping, and finishing, or just taping and finishing. So I want to see the difference there, see how much I really want to get into hanging drywall. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, I'm taking the leftover insulation from doing the walls, and I'm doing some of the ceilings between rooms. It was a good suggestion that you guys made in the comments or the other video. So I'm just going to use up what I got left, insulate this bedroom and the bathroom and maybe over there underneath where that other bedroom is. And that'll about use up everything I have left. And then I got to move down to the basement and insulate the studio so we can have that done. And uh, I'm just doing a bunch of odds and ends. Probably tomorrow it's going to be nice again. So I'm going to try and clean up the outside and get that ready to do little bit of cleanup grading we have to control the water runoff all that so uh, we don't want our pier footings to get you know washed up because we got a lot of weight on those uh, on those piers now with a with a porch slab so that's it just uh, moving around and doing little odds and ends and getting ready for the next phase of this build which is drywall and porch roof and exterior siding <music> I decided to take a little break from insulation because well, my neck is stiff and working above your head is a bit of a pain and I decided to start wiring up the drivers for the LED cans most of the lights in this house about 95% of them are going to be these cans they're not cans they're wafers these are LED they're like uh, 14 watt LED, which is equivalent to a 100 watt light bulb. And the cool thing about these, these are from Lithonia. You can use these to retrofit uh, 
or you can do new install, you know, new construction. They run off these little drivers. Uh, you wire the box and you can even pick the color of the light. So you can pick the color temperature right there. 3,000, 4,000, or 5,000 Kelvin. So we're, I'm setting most of these to 4,000, which is middle of the road. It's like 3,000 would be too warm, too orangish. And 5,000 is like in a hospital, too bright. So if, but the cool thing is you can change them. If you decide you want like a warmer area with warmer light, you can change them. And they're easy and they're pretty slick. Uh, they come with all the push-in connectors, which I am using. Thought about not using them, but they're super easy. And like I said, they only draw like like a half an amp. They're, there's no power to them. Mount the box to a joist, plug that in, good to go. Reason I'm doing it now is once we get drywall and all that up there, I want these up in there ready to go with just this. So I don't have to drill the hole, wire this, put the box up in there, and it's uh, be kind of a pain. So got enough room here. And I guess I'll mount the box here. But what I do is I just take the knockout. Take that out. Then you use a strain relief, which is one of these little screw-in deals. Put that on there. Crank it down. All right, take your wire, put it through the strain relief. Most of you probably already know this, but for those of you who don't, I'm showing you what I'm doing. Uh, let's see. Uh, that up in there. Tighten down the screws on the strain relief to lock your wire onto the box. All right, wire is tied to the box. Take yourself a little one inch screw. And just stick it to the joist. Make sure our color temperature is set. Now, the only thing we got to deal with is this little wire instead of putting the whole box in once drywall is on. So we'll cut a circle. It comes with a template. So you cut your circle out, and then you can hook that baby up. Wire this up. So I'm pulling the pushing connectors down. Get the same length of wire. I like these push-in connectors. You don't have to use wire nuts, especially with something that is this low powered. Strip off your uh, wiring for the house. Connect the ground to the ground. Push it in there. Black goes to black, push that in there, white goes to white, push that in there. And then I just tuck all this business up in the box. And here's what it looks like. There's your little color selector for the color of the light. Push in connectors. And you got your lead for your wafer. Good to go, easy peasy.
got the forms off now we're going to uh, grind clean up that ledge with a grinder a little bit and uh, that should be it until we're ready to stucco uh, we'll stucco over that fascia board but that's our drip sort of our overhang for the, the drip edge then we'll put some stone on the columns I think it'll look good when it's done It's already almost dry I'm just going to do the face. Alright, the first two of seven loads of gravel are dropped. We're uh, doing the driveway down here at the walkout basement part, and it joins our other driveway. And then we're going to top dress down at the bottom of the hill by the gate and all that, and just kind of get all this cleaned up a little bit. So, waiting on five more loads, and we'll get that box bladed and spread out later today. Be good. <laughs> A couple videos back I was talking about this laundry stub up and how it's too big to fit in this 2 by 4 wall. So I'm just firing it out with ripped pieces of that strapping I had left. pipe anymore and then we did get the driveway laid down yesterday for the basement got it all gray graded turned out pretty nice I like it so it comes over here kind of circles around to the front of the house and uh, goes down the hill 
to the road. Now I gotta figure out some sort of topsoil or sod or some business to get this cleaned up and filled in since spring is here and we want that to stay where it is. Insulation finally finished. All the ceilings, all the walls, where we want to dampen the sound. If I never have to touch another piece of insulation again, it'll be too soon. It's just very tedious, itchy, and kind of just boring, like painting and mudding and taping drywall. But at least it's finished. Uh, probably next thing I'll start working on, I think I'm gonna look like, maybe you start wiring up the electrical outlets in the basement because we're not gonna drywall the exterior walls quite yet. And I wanna get things ready. So as soon as we do get everything drywalled, I can just start busting out all the electrical up here. And my goal is to get power hooked up and in here and turned on as soon as I can. So uh, that'll probably be what I work on next. We'll see you in the next video. Appreciate you watching.